Hi, hi, it's Simon from Driving Spirit. Uh, it's a Sunday and here I am um, playing with cars. Very strange, very strange, but it's a bit special because today we've got my friend Nick Savage and his wife have come with a very, very lovely car. One of my all time favorites. Now here in the garage at the moment, we have a 1965 Ami 6. And uh, I posted a picture on Facebook. I love these cars. And uh, and Nick got in touch and said, uh, shall I bring mine in on Sunday and we'll photograph them together. So here we have Nick and Jerry's beautiful 64, which is a very good year, I might tell you, Ami 6 Saloon. And uh, this is in jade green. And I just want to show you a couple of the styling features on this car. Now this, this incredible looking car uh, was the favorite design of uh, Flaminio Bertoni, who was responsible for a number of really good Citroen designs. He, he styled the Traction Avant. He was um, involved with the styling of the DS. Um, I think he was also uh, responsible for some of the styling on the 2CV. But his absolute favourite, his absolute favourite was the Ami 6 Saloon. And so um, this car, you've got this beautiful inverted rear window here, which um, practically gives more headroom in the back of the car. It also keeps water off the back window. Uh, but it creates such an incredibly bold styling statement. You've got these sculpted um, uh, swages down the side, which always to me look like somebody's taken a beard trimmer down the side of the car. And at the front, oh my goodness, the front of it, you've got this gaping front grille here. It looks like a gargoyle, and the bonnet looks like somebody, now somebody once said, it looks like somebody's put wet pastry on the front of the car. So you've got this, this kind of sagging pastry bonnet, but actually it's just such, such a bold car. I've, to some people, it's so ugly, it's beautiful. And to me, I think it just is beautiful, but I can see what they're saying. I, I read an article once where it said it was the sort of styling that would upset your neighbor's dog. Anyway, wonderful, wonderful car, soft, soft suspension and marshmallow seats. The second best riding Citroen ever made, and that is saying something, which means the second best riding car in existence. The best, of course, being the iconic and benchmark Citroen DS, uh, which we are about to feature in a video uh, here as well. Anyway, let's go for a drive in the Ami 6. So Nick's been kind enough to allow me to, to drive this. And oh, we've even got seat belts, look, my goodness me. So we'll pop those on and off we go. Gear pattern beautifully etched down on there. So that's the ignition on and the French, it's starter, which is not the starter. That's actually the choke and démarreur, which is the starter. lovely look out of that back window Nick. What an amazing amazing view that is. Fancy having two Ami 6 saloons in at the same time. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> The 
Sammy benefits from Citroen's single spoke steering wheel, which is like it's like a, a a butler under the bonnet, handing his handing you the wheel with a silver cuffed hand, unfettered view of the instruments. Just check the brakes. So the Ami um, has a 602 cc engine, 602. Just wait for the BMW. to have 602 cc's uh, so it gave it a little bit more power now this is a very early 600 cc engine and um, so this one uh, will develop I think it's 22 24 brake horsepower something like that they that's, uh, in 1965 I think they they upgraded the engine and it brought it up to 26 brake horsepower uh, but it's a very, very smooth engine, it's got plenty of torque for its size and um, so you've got a car that was significantly more refined than the 2CV and in fact the Ami was the best selling uh, car in France um, in the mid 60s, uh, outselling absolutely everything else. Um, so, you know, people would upgrade from a 2CV and they'd have the same suspension, the same practicality, uh, but in a car that was just a little bit more refined and sophisticated. A little bit more power, no longer struggling in the same way up hills as early 2CVs with their very meagre 425cc engine and 12 brake horsepower. So. Um, Oh, it's such a pleasure to drive. Soft and floaty suspension. I love this instrument binnacle down here. And this was the, the first use of this, apart from the... Oh, actually, it wasn't the first use. It, it was in the, uh, the Citroen H van to start with. You've got your parking lights here, Station Mall. You've got your... SWE glass there, the wipers, light switch with the horn on the end, indicators here which you pull to cancel. I love the interior mirror on the dash like the DS. And the view out through the window of the swoopy bonnet, swooping up to the headlights, swooping down into the middle. Such a great car, such a great car. I'm absolutely delighted that Nick plans to keep this car. Nick uh, has had a number of classics and um, always been on the fringe of Citroen with SMs and Maharis and most recently a 2CV, but now he, like me, has a real soft spot for the Ami 6. And once you've got one of these, it's it's a benchmark really. What an amazing vehicle. So this, um, they changed the engine on the Ami to a later one uh, in uh, about 1967 I think it was. That, uh, that was the 67, 68 they changed to the higher revving later 2CV602 engine which developed it a bit more power but there's something very charming very charming indeed about this known by Anorax as the M4 engine it feels really sprightly to be honest apparently this engine was new five years ago, brand new, out of the crate. Um, imagine, imagine being able to buy a brand new 1965 engine. Wow. Really 
does go well. And it's a great colour this as well for it. It's very, very of its time. And uh, it's kind of reminiscent of American cars of the time. These kind of pastel colours. Very lovely. And such a refreshing change from so many grey Citroëns of the time. Really bold. I'm also loving the the light grey interior finish, the white gear lever, the grey handbrake lever, all of those. Very nice place to be. And I imagine that this must be a real head turner it's the styling is is so unusual um, and I guess if somebody's intelligent enough to realize that it's not a Ford Anglia uh, then they must think but then what on earth is it take this car over a speed bump there as if nothing ever happened we're going to take this car for a little photo shoot we're going to just go and park it somewhere pretty in other words not the workshop take some photographs and uh, we'll be posting those on Facebook a little bit of a grunge as Nick told me there would be from the second gear synchromesh but otherwise the gearbox really sweet um, yeah Also, Nick's mentioned uh, to me that um, uh, the seating could do with a little bit of attention, and uh, and I would agree. Um, generally speaking, when you clamber into one of these, it literally is like climbing onto a marshmallow. Um, I think we're still going. We? Yeah, uh, the battery was going low on the phone there, but I think we're okay. Uh, we'll carry on as if nothing's happened and um, yeah we'll just go up here uh, yes generally speaking these cars the the uh, the marshmallow seating adds to the um, general subtlety suppleness subtlety suppleness of the ride uh, and in this one there is something fairly solid under the seat but Look at these seats. I mean, they are deeply buttoned, sumptuous, sumptuous, just like masses of foam and so beautifully soft as only an old Citroen can be. Really, really, really lovely. Um, absorbing every, you know, whatever the suspension won't isolate from the buttocks, the seats will. Magnificent. So, uh, Let's just have a look around the outside of the car, shall we? <sighs> what a beauty. So this is Simon Day, 
reporting from Driving Spirit. Thanks to Nick, whose lovely Emmy I've just been able to test. And we'll see you for the next edition. If you enjoy our videos, please do subscribe. I, I've never asked this before, but like and subscribe. And um, they say it helps. So <laughs> let's see if it does. Bye for now.